Well, I think from the perspective of the UK, the most worrying situation probably is the war in Ukraine and uh, the, the stalemate. But on the other hand, the failure to continue to support the Ukrainians in the way that they've been supported hitherto in the last two years. I mean, that's a, I think that is the most immediate security problem. Uh, the other longer term issue, the, 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 the more serious, I think, national security threat probably is China uh, and its uh, intervention in political life through using uh, a very aggressive uh, hacking and IT uh, approach. So uh, those are the two issues I think I would put at the forefront of my concerns. If Ukraine is number one, let's just speculate for a second, what would happen to the Ukraine war if Trump gets back into the White House, given that Hung Hungary's Orban has said that if Trump was re-elected, he wouldn't give one penny more of military assistance to Ukraine. And indeed, Trump himself, and it might have just been a throwaway line, who knows, said that he would, he would, he would encourage Russia to attack NATO members who he perceives are not paying their way. Yeah, well, I think one has to be a little bit sceptical about what Trump says when he's campaigning. Uh, and, of course, it is very difficult to anticipate exactly what his policy is going to be. Um, I think, you know, his national security advisors need to clear up, you know, this uncertainty. And at some point, I'm sure it will be clarified. Look, there's no question that there's a reluctance now politically uh, in America to continue the level of support to Ukraine that America's been giving. And we all know that there's a 60 billion sum stuck uh, in Congress. But, you know, maybe that will be resolved. But the immediate effect of the holdup on the American funding actually is to push the European nations, uh, and I'm not talking about the EU, I'm talking about everything, including the UK, to get their act together and maybe have a much more coordinated approach to funding Ukraine and making good at least some of that uh, gap in American money. And there's an urgency about this now. So, Richard, while we're talking about money and numbers here, let me bring up the UK's nuclear deterrent because there was a 44-page report published by the UK government looking into this, and there is a fear now that there might be a gap in credibility around that nuclear deterrent because of the cost of funding. How important is it for the UK to continue on a certain pathway when it comes to the nuclear deterrent? Well, I think in the current situation that we have got, it's important that we maintain a serious nuclear capability. My understanding is that that's not really in question. Um, OK, there are competing, massive competing uh, funding requirements. All countries face that at the moment. But I think in the UK, we probably are going to see a rise in defence expenditure over the course of the next 18 months to two years. And a key part of that is having an effective nuclear deterrent, which is expensive, but on the other hand, is an essential part of our national security infrastructure. I want to pick up on the longer term point you're making around China and how we think about the security threat. You've pointed to electric vehicles, cars that could be coming in now as we see a super competitive China when it comes to autos. How concerned should we be about purchasing a low cost car out of China in future? Well, you're probably aware I wrote about this recently uh, in the national press. I think you should be very concerned. Um, they are equipped with, uh, you know, cellular model modules, um, the sort of infrastructure of the Internet of Things. There's no question that, uh, you know, inexpensive Chinese car has devices under the bonnet which should concern us. Um, the, the car could be switched off. Uh, by the manufacturer, how many cars would it take to completely block the circulation of traffic in a major Western city? <coughs> and then malware can be put into the computer in the car and, uh, you know, the collection of data right down to bugging the car internally is a possibility. Now, I'm not saying that this is an immediate threat to any car purchaser, but if you take a sort of pragmatic look, a large number of Chinese cars in Western cities, if we have a serious deterioration 
in relations with China. How is China going to exploit that, uh, let's say, asset built up over time? I think it is a serious problem. And, you know, the, 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 the threat from the cellular modules in items of Chinese manufacture is a real issue and we need to wake up to the possibility and uh, i mean i don't have an immediate solution but we need to be thoroughly aware of the problem and personally i certainly wouldn't buy a chinese electric car even if it's an absolute knockdown bargain price and of course the current level of uh, these byd cars is it, the cost is very low in comparison that's due to state subsidies